Well, good morning. It's great to be with you. And I'm glad to be back. Actually, I first attended this breakfast back in 2010. And I was going to mention in 2011, I had my first opportunity to speak to this group. Um, and back in that time frame, what I would say is where Michigan was at compared to where we are today, it's been a big change. If you go back to 2011, we were coming out of being at the bottom. How many ways were we 50 out of 50? And when you looked at our big three industries, and I define our big three industries in the state, it's manufacturing, tourism, and agricultural and food production. Ag is one of the big three, and it needs to be recognized by people across the state. Where were we on those three industries? Manufacturing, we had been in the tank. We'd had massive cutbacks and scalebacks in our state. Tourism was just barely recovering. And our shining star was agriculture. And I recall in 2011 being here to thank all of you. Because during those difficult 10 years before, our one shining star was the ag industry. Well, where are we a few years later? We've made tremendous progress. In manufacturing, we're the fastest growing in the country. We were number one in the country in adding manufacturing jobs in the United States over the last few years. And we should be really proud of that. In tourism, we made large investments in Pure Michigan. And now tourism has really taken off again in our state. We're actually seeing more out-of-state investment than in-state investment in many ways. And that's exciting because that's bringing resources to Michigan. In terms of ag and food, back then we were a $91 billion industry. We're now a $96 billion industry. And the opportunities are really bright. But even with the success, how do we keep going? Because as we've become the comeback state in the United States, with all these recoveries and the good things going on, my point to you is, is we should not be complacent nor content with where we're at. When you have success happening, when things are going good, you don't slow down. In fact, you should be pushing on the accelerator to say, how do you go faster? How do you make it stick? Because one of the important things I want to share with you, when I looked at getting into public office and working with all of you on having Michigan come back, is it wasn't just about us. It was how do we make this happen? How do we create a foundation that's going to last beyond us? Because I know in our hearts, if I went around this room and say, how many of you know you're going to be OK, but your concern is for your children and your children's children? The question is, how many more centennial farms can we see created in Michigan? Not how many do we keep. How do we keep this going? How do we grow it? It's about coming together as Michiganders in a partnership to stay on this path to success. And so I wanted to share just a few simple principles with you. First on the government side, three basic principles that I believe in that I try to govern by. First is government's role. We have an important role, and it's not the role that too many politicians think about. Too often political people view government as a place that takes and spends people's money. It's not. That's not right. Our role is to serve you. It's to give you efficient, effective, and accountable government. My aspiration is actually to have it so you feel good that you've bought the right amount of government. I know you don't feel that way when you get your tax bill today, but that's the way it should be. That's what we should be aspiring to do. Secondly, our role is to create the environment for success and let free enterprise work. You're great business people out there in the ag industry. Our role is to create that environment and tax environment, the regulatory environment, creating areas for success. One of the things I'm really proud of is the first law I signed into action was me, because that's about creating higher standards, creating voluntary programs for success. And the third principle is relentless positive action, which is basically a philosophy of you hired me to do a job and my job is to solve problems. My job is to look at what's the problem, what's a common sense solution and to do it. It's not to waste time blaming anyone for anyone or having trains come by. <laughs> so they plan this on purpose. This is how you get even with the Wolverine when they have to speak to the ag group. Now I do, I am proud to have an honorary degree now. Give me a break. Maybe it'll go faster. Okay. I got a comment, I should work on transportation next, and that was a good comment. <laughs> it's a feisty crowd today, but we'll get through it. About relentless positive action, though. 
Blame has never solved the problem. Fighting with anyone has never solved the problem. It's about problem solving. That's how we're gonna to come together in Michiganders and succeed. Now, specifically with respect to ag, there are three key principles of positive opportunity that we need to stay focused on. First of all, innovation, research and development. How do we keep on coming up with new ideas, new concepts, and leading the world in those areas? That's why I'm proud to have a great institution like Michigan State on the forefront of that. That's why I'm proud in our budget, we put dollars aside for growth and integration and innovation programs. Ways to make things better. The second one is value added processing. The more we can add value, the more jobs we're gonna create, the more opportunity we create a year round environment to ship products across the globe. And again, let's continue that path. Last year I had a great visit to Michigan Sugar. It's wonderful to see the innovations they're doing in terms of taking their core product and adding new variations. Dried milk is being a big hit now in terms of success in our state. That's the way to look at opportunity. Let's stay on that path. And the third one that ties right into that is the need to export more. We have the opportunity to more and more be a center for the rest of the world for agricultural and food products. We need to step that up. We are seeing tremendous success, but let's not slow down. Last year we had a double digit increase in exports. We should be seeing that each and every year for the next couple decades by doing our jobs right. That's the exciting opportunity we have. Now, two things I wanna mention that go with this whole scenario of success, because I see a bright 10, 20, 30 year horizon for agriculture in Michigan. Um, Luanna mentioned it, President Simon mentioned it, and it's something that we didn't actually match notes, but I view it as critically important. That's a positive opportunity, is for Michigan to take more leadership in the whole area of food safety. We've got tremendous resources already in food safety. We do a great job within the state of Michigan, but the rest of the world is critically concerned about food safety. They're looking for places to show more leadership across the globe. It's sitting there, folks. All we have to do is pick up that opportunity and go for it, and we should. Just yesterday, I did an event with former Secretary Hank Paulson, who's spending most of his time on China. When I had a discussion with him about future opportunities, food safety was at the top of the list. There's tremendous opportunity to work on there. The other one is a concern, an area that we do need to work on, and that's the whole question of talent. We've got extremely talented people in agriculture in every part of our state, but we have a skills gap. We don't have enough young people going into fields that are critical in our future, and that includes agriculture. I now redefine the skilled trades as not just plumber, welder, electrician, but when anyone on the production floor of a manufacturing facility is a skilled tradesperson. Anyone on a quarter million dollar tractor, a half a million dollar combine is a skilled tradesperson. We need to create a better environment and a better situation to help young people and people looking for that next career get career connected. We need to look at other ways to do apprenticeship programs. We need to look at better ways to work together to fill that gap because literally, we can put tens of thousands of more Michiganders to work in good, well-paying careers, honorable professions, and we need to work harder on that. When you ask me what my top priority for the future is, that would be number one, is how do we look towards making sure we get people better career connected in terms of never telling them what they should study, but creating that environment for success. Because the opportunities are here in our state, we're well poised, you're in a fabulous industry showing fabulous success, but we need to keep that going. We need to feed that industry, the enterprise, and be successful together. And that's how you come back to that fundamental point. We have now come to the point of starting to say we have a strong foundation again in Michigan to build on. We have the foundation of that next centennial home for the next generations in our state. Now let's provide the resources, let's provide the passion and fire to keep going for the next, not few years, but the next few decades and the next few generations to have them excited to say they're building a bright future for their kids. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Have a great Ag Expo, but let's keep going. Be excited when you're out seeing these exhibits to say how do we turn it in to that place for our kids and our kids' kids. Thank you so much.